Welcome back to a Timberborn video, and we're not actually in a Timberborn. Um, update 6 released today on the experimental branch, and I thought we'd have a quick look at the update notes before I start a let's play on here, because there's some really cool stuff. So the biggest one that I think is, and they didn't, I don't think preview this, 3D water physics. So the way that Timberborn used to do water physics was essentially, as they say here, two and a half dimensions, really two dimensional. Um, it was a sheet that basically dropped over the map. And what that meant was that you couldn't have water layers going over the top of each other. And now you can, and you can sort of see that in the video on the screen at the moment where there is bad water flowing through a raised channel over the top of normal water which is really cool and it's going to allow loads of really cool options for you know diverting bad water around things to get it out of the way moving water around the map it's going to be really good um so yeah fluid physics have had a huge update and they now run properly with three-dimensional physics i expect there will be some bugs with that but that means you can have multiple layers of fluids um, it also says that they've reworked how fluids are rendered and they behave more fluidly. We'll see how that works. I've had a little tiny play, but not a lot. So we'll see how that behaves. Another big change, water wheels no longer slow down water flow. So that's going to be really interesting for creating perpetual motion machines, potentially. They originally put that in to prevent that. But now maybe that's going to be more of an option. So, yep. Yeah see how that goes but mainly you're going to be able to stack layers of water you can see it here in the video um, and you can see it here where they're talking about verticality in building as well um, so along with the three-dimensional water they've added in some tools to help you build more three-dimensionally there are some uh, some overhangs that you can build which are a bit like some of the side platforms if you played with mods so they will let you build um, dams and levees on top above things. So you can see here we've got some levees that have been built on top of platforms. Um, there's also an impermeable floor, which it looks like they've done here. Um, so that's kind of cool. You can see there's a lot more three dimensional vertical building going on, which is going to be you know, allow a lot more flexibility, a lot more complexity, and you can see the way the water's flowing out over this here. It's going to be really cool. Um, along with that, there are some new buildings. So these overhangs, so these are two by three by four by one by and five by one single. Uh, they are essentially the, almost like the side by platforms, but you have to anchor them on the ground to build them. I've had a little play with them. I say they're really quite cool. We'll look at them as I start to play with update six. There's the impermeable floor. So this is a metal floor which you can put on any solid surface and it means water won't go through it. So you could put it on a platform, as it says here, or an overhang and then water will flow over it. That gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, as I said, you can build platforms and dams on you can build dams and levees on platforms so again you could put a layer of platforms through put levees on them and then water will flow over it lots of options there um there are some new metal platforms um i've not really had a look at those but we've got a three by and a five by metal platform so going to be cool to have a look at those um looks like they've changed the cost of the suspension bridges they're cheaper that's good um and oh that's cool so the water pump and the deep water pumps max pipe length have increased from five to five and eight tiles respectively excellent so um yeah so i guess that's folk tails and iron teeth are going to be able to pump a little bit deeper give you a bit more freedom with how you can make use of water and that kind of thing that's really good um, and then there's these natural overhangs as well these are only available in the map editor but so for those of people that are making maps you can make some really cool kind of waterfalls and stuff um, or if you know if you go into developer mode you could edit the map yourself and add these in but again lots more flexibility very cool another great addition 
um, automated sluices. So these are a bit like a floodgate, but not quite. Um, so these allow you to, they're a water block where the water can go through at the level you place them. And you can control these off of the water level downstream and they know the water level downstream. So you don't seem to need a, uh, a stream gauge in there or off of contamination. So it's a bit like having simple triggers mod built in, but you don't need simple triggers mod. Um, floodgates haven't been updated to have this automation, which is a little bit frustrating, but you can, you know, do now some automation without needing mods, which is kind of cool. Um, I've had a little play with these. These are good fun. Um, I think these are going to allow a lot of control of the game without needing to have the simple triggers mod necessarily. Um, so yeah, and these are all things that I don't think that they, they, they previewed before the update came out. So yeah, looking forward to playing with those. We've got the wonders that were mentioned earlier as a key feature of the game. And these are essentially really big well-being additions. Um, obviously, lots of science points to unlock them, 20,000 science points, and then lots of materials to build them. Um, and I think you know, I, I'm just going to wait until I can build these things to see how they react. But you can see what the models are. Um, they're cool. They're going to be fun. Um, they're kind of an end game thing, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, le I'm less excited about those, more excited about the changes to how the game engine is going to work. Flexible start. So once you've completed a wonder, you can now choose where you start in the future on maps, which is kind of fun. I think, you know, generally the start points locked. You can go in and change yourself. You can go in and delete the um, your starting outpost and place it somewhere else on the map if you want. So you could kind of do that anyway. But yeah, it's, it's a cool feature. I kind of like it. Um, mod support. So the developers have added official mod support in as part of update six. So yeah, that's good. We'll see how it goes, whether modders that have already created mods are porting them across into the official support. Hopefully they will. Hopefully this will open up more modding and hopefully it will make modding more stable as they update the game. So they've added in built in mod manager access. So that should be good. We'll see how that goes. I've not had a play with that yet. I have updated one of my computers to the experimental branch because I'll talk about in a minute how I'm going to handle my let's plays. But yeah, this looks really cool. Um, and there are some mods available on there already, apparently. So, yep. Um, that's cool. And yeah. So they've done some updates to maps. They've updated planes, lakes, and the terraces. Yeah, I'm not sure which map I'm going to play on yet. Don't think they've added any new maps to with this update. Previously, they have, but not on this. So that's okay. Um, and then there have been some visual changes. Um, so a few updates to animations. Really, I think the ones that are more interesting, some performance changes, hopefully, the game is going to work better. I've been running into a lot of issues as my colonies get bigger in that the game engine is struggling, even though my computers are not. So yeah, hopefully that's improved. Lower RAM usage, maybe VRAM usage. Hopefully that'll help. Hopefully the video cards aren't so stressed. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of hoping that as your colony gets bigger, things aren't stressing the engine as much, but Anyway, update six is available on the experimental branch. You do need to opt in to the experimental branch in Steam. Um, but there are instructions on how to do that as part of the update notes. Um, there are instructions on how to get access to the modding as part of the update notes. So just follow those. And uh, yeah, so I have a series currently running on Badwater Ridge. That's going to keep going. If you're a fan of that series, don't worry. Um, rather than doing four episodes a week on there, I'm going to drop down to two. And we're going to start a new series with Update 6, doing hopefully at least two videos a week on there because I really want to start playing with some of these new mechanics. And then as the Update 5 series finishes, we'll focus on this a bit more. But yeah, Update 6, this 3D water physics has got me really excited. I've had a little play with it. It looks really cool. If you think this video has been interesting, click the like button. And uh, 
any comments, questions or suggestions, stick them below and I'll see you next time.